to a new day. This is Pastor Mark. I'm the lead pastor, and we are so grateful that you're a part of this broadcast and that you uh, are part of our family and that you've connected with us. Uh, we want to connect with you, and so I'm glad we've had this appointment. Today, I got a question for you. If you had one word, one word to describe Jesus, what you know of him, what would that one word be? What would you choose? Well, the obvious answer would be love, right? Um, some would say powerful, uh, truthful, uh, wise, passionate, maybe kind. Well, I want to add to the description of who Jesus is today by reading a story out of Mark chapter 4 and making a real life application. So, Come with me, and uh, we are going to uh, open up the Word of God, Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 38. It is a familiar uh, story, uh, hopefully. It is uh, Jesus in a boat, and there's going to come up a storm. And We're by the seashore today, and it is both a beautiful place, but it also can be a very ferocious place, a scary place. And just like your world and my world, it can be beautiful, it could be wonderful, and in the next moment something could change and to cast you into the darkness and the, the, the crisis of uh, that particular moment and challenge. So read this story with this in mind, just after the darkness of evening had arrived. Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross over to the other side of the, of the lake. So leaving the crowd, the disciples got into the boat in which Jesus was already sitting. And, and they took him with him, and other boats sailed with them. And suddenly, as they were crossing the lake, a ferocious storm arose. And with the violent wind and waves that were crashing into the boat, until that boat was nearly swamped. But Jesus, I love that sentence start, but Jesus... He was calmly sleeping in the stern, resting on a cushion. What one word would you use to describe Jesus? Well, this story adds a description, and that would be calm or relaxed. And uh, here he is in the middle of this incredible storm, and he's the only one who's not bothered. He's the only one who was not worried. He's the only one who's not stressed and freaked out. In fact, he's resting. He's asleep. He's on a cushion in a boat. And remember, this has something to do, obviously, with Jesus and the disciples and the other people who were traveling with him, but it has to do with you and it has to do with I, uh, with, 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 uh, it has to do with me. <laughs> you and I, that's what I'm trying to say, right? So um, let's unpack this story. Um, and, and before I do, uh, I just want to remind you of all the content that a New Day Church brings on a weekly basis. We have Monday prayer, Wednesday prayer. Uh, it's on Facebook Live. Uh, we want you to be a part of that. Join in. On Sundays, we're obviously on YouTube, but we're also on Rumble, and uh, you can catch us at adudaychurch.com. You can download our app. Uh, we have every means available to get God's Word, the resources that you need for a, a, a great life and a fulfilled life and a Jesus life coming at you all the time. And then finally, I just want to encourage you to be a giver, give faithfully and give generously so that we can continue to extend the kingdom both near and far. We're doing a great work over the decades in Oaxaca, Mexico, and we've just launched a, a new project in uh, Pakistan, building a church and a home for uh, some, young, uh, some young pastors of ours. And so uh, this is a new day. We want you to be a part of it. Let's get back to this story and set the stage. It's a story happening in, in the time of Christ, but it's also in reference to your and my life every day. First of all, in this story, it says darkness was just setting. And there's something about darkness that's a little freaky, a little creepy, and uh, it, it kind of uh, uh, makes you anxious, no matter what or where you're at. 
Um, and think about it. Um, it's like in darkness you have one of your senses removed, your eyesight, your ability to see. But here's what I'd like you to do. Close your eyes right now. Yeah, go ahead and close them. Now, open them again. In that brief time, did anything really change? No. We just removed one of your senses. And now I want you to close your eyes again. And again, it turns to something darkened. But now invite the person, the one, the only one who can see in the darkness. The one who said, I am with you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll walk with you through the fire and through the storm and through the water. Invite that person in. Take his hand and let him lead you. In our darkness doesn't really have power over us other than what we give it. Next time you're afraid, close your eyes for just a moment and then open them up again and realize that having one less of your senses can only increase the sensitivity of Christ and his presence for you. Here's the second thing about this story. Jesus says very clearly, uh, let's cross over to the other side. Uh, what I take away from that is Jesus already has an outcome planned and in place for you and I. What is that outcome? Well, there's a macro outcome, big picture stuff, and that would be he wants us to find him and to follow him and to uh, remain in him and actually become him as we follow him and as he leads us. That's the macro picture. He wants to be with you forever. That's his big goal. But there's also a macro purpose and plan. And that plan is just to get you to the other side, to move you from the beginning of your day clear to when you close your eyes. He wants to get you to the other side. It could be a beautiful day. It could be no waves and wind, or it could be a ferocious day. But he wants you to move to the other side. Here's the, uh, the third takeaway. Jesus uh, is not only in this uh, story, do you notice the disciples are there in a boat? But there's a third party, and that is there are others in the boat. Think about it. In life, there are only three parties. It's you, other people around you, and Jesus. And they're all interconnected. You might say, well, the decisions I make today are only going to affect me, or maybe they're going to affect my family and nobody else. Well, that's not true. Your decisions, your responses in life always have an effect on Christ and also on others. And here's how this works. Jesus first has an effect on you. And if he has an effect on you in terms of you becoming like him, you're going to affect others, whether they're near your boat or whether they're far away. You will be surprised how many people you can affect. And if something is happening to you, you bring it to Jesus. That's a connection. But then what? Other people see you bringing stuff to Jesus and they're listening and they're watching. And maybe something happens to others and good or bad, and it falls on you. You're a part of that good or bad. Well, then you bring all of that to Christ. And so we are interconnected. And if we lived our life knowing that there is a Jesus with us and he wants to be close, he wants to be there in all situations, but also there are other people watching and you and I can have a tremendous effect simply by following Jesus. And obviously in this story, uh, there's another backdrop to this stage. There was a storm. And the Bible describes this as a very ferocious storm. The waves were actually uh, coming towards the back of the boat and, and almost sinking it. And uh, I, I can only imagine, I've been out in some rough stuff out here and uh, it, it, it can happen quickly and you, you're not always sure what to do and how to do it. And um, you know, life is not bereft of storms. I mean, storms are all around us. Like this beach, it can be a very great day, a beautiful day, a beautiful life, and then all of a sudden something happens. And so I want you to test and see if this story isn't a great template to live your life in such a way that you're like Christ, that 
People would describe you as relaxed or calm or at rest, even in the storm. In fact, the title of this message is, Life is Hard, Bring a Cushion. Jesus was sleeping on a cushion in the middle of the storm, and you can too. It's possible for your life to reflect and be just like Jesus. Here's the final takeaway. Those words I already alluded to, but Jesus, but Jesus. He was in the back of the boat. He was asleep. He was on a cushion. He was at rest, not bothered and not troubled and not stressed. What's your cushion in life? And what brings you rest? What brings you calm? Well, I'm here to tell you it's all about Jesus. And Jesus, you place him in the middle of everything and uh, you watch what happens. And uh, we're going to continue to uh, uh, kind of tear, take this story and uh, look at the application right now. But I, I, I really want you and, and to think about Jesus had so many different responses. He could have pointed at the fishermen and said, listen, you guys are experts. But you know, he was an expert above all the experts. He's the living Lord, and uh, he's the one who made the seas. And so he knows what's going on. And uh, he could have uh, uh, pointed at the other boats, and he could have said, do something. Why aren't you involved? Get closer. And he could have blamed or accused, or those kind of things. And we do that in life, right? We're looking for hope. We're looking for the answers. But, uh, you know, Jesus chose to be relaxed and calm during a crisis. And again, so can you. And it's a great way to live free from the encumbrance of the ups and downs, the circumstances, the rises and falls of life and how it comes to you. So let's take a look at the rest of the story this morning. Mark chapter 4, and we're going to pick this up at verse 39 to 41. And so as the storm was raging, the disciples, they shook Jesus awake, saying, Teacher, don't you even care that we are about to die? Pretty desperate stuff, right? Fully awake, he stood up, he rebuked the storm, he shouted to the sea, and he said, Hush, and be still. And he turned to his disciples and said to them, Why are you so afraid? Haven't you learned to trust yet? But they were overwhelmed with fear. Again, this is a, a story 2,000 plus years ago, but it, it resonates in your life and in my life. And what are the takeaways? Well, the takeaway is life is hard. Bring a cushion. Bring someone, bring something uh, that is, is going to move you through those storms in life, even as uh, we get a little wave action behind me, right? So how do we live a relaxed or a calm life uh, in the midst of your hardships or the darkness of your own soul trying to find the light of Christ or, or the circumstances that are around you? We live in a very violent and ferocious world and, and every day there's bad news and then there's bad news and then there's more bad news. So how do we deal with that? Well, life is hard, so let's take a cushion. The first cushion is I want you to deal decisively with fear. You know, fear is not going to just go away. Fear stays until it no longer has a hold on you. Let me ask a series of questions. In this story in the Bible, for the disciples, where is the safest place on earth during this storm? Well, the answer is obvious, isn't it? <laughs> It's in the boat, but it's not just in the boat. It's really with Jesus. Wherever Jesus is, it's the safest place in the whole world. Let me ask you, ask you this question in your life right now. Where's the safest place that you can be? And again, I'm leading you to an answer. It's with Jesus, and not just with Jesus theoretically or religiously, but deep in your heart, a trust in Jesus that is greater than whatever you're going through, whatever the crisis, whatever the storm. 
Here's the last question, pretty similar. In your next storm, where's the safest place that you're going to be? Where's your cushion of comfort and rest and, and security? Well, it's Jesus. It's his presence. It's you choosing to trust over fear. And you and I practice fear or trust on a daily basis. We have those opportunities. We practice fear in some cases so often that it is our default and our go-to move. Something happens and we go, oh no. We don't even know what's happened fully. It's just this thing inside of us that jumps with anxiety and fear. Or we can practice uh, the presence and the trust in Jesus Christ. And that's how you deal uh, decisively with fear. You recognize what fear is and you put trust in its place. And you say to yourself, where is the safest place I can be right now? It's trusting Jesus and staying with him. That's it, folks. Deal decisively with fear until fear is no longer your master and trust is the pinnacle of your relationship with Jesus Christ. Every story in the Bible, if you want to boil it down, is trust. Will you trust me in the ark? Will you trust me across the Red Sea? Will you trust me in the wilderness? Will you trust me when you're outnumbered? Will you trust me in front of the giant? Trust me and follow Jesus. Life is hard. He is your cushion. Here's a second takeaway from this story. I want you to turn the question that you have in your heart into a statement. And you might ask, well, what's the question? The question is found in this story. Don't you know or don't you care that we're about to die? And it's always in us, whether we hear it out of our own mouth or whether we think it or whether we feel it. Where is God? Why is this happening? Doesn't God love me? Doesn't he care? Where is he? Doesn't he know that this is freaking me out? It's a question. How about we turn it into a statement? Let's have a conversation. You and Jesus, let the conversation be something like this. Do you believe I know everything that is happening and going on? And that not only do I know, but do I care deeply about you? What's the obvious answer? Yes. Right? Okay. Do you believe me when I tell you? Here's the second question. Respond to it. Do you believe me when I tell you that it is imperative that you do not worry and do not fear? And of course, the obvious answer is, well, yeah. If you know what's going on, if you care for me, if you're with me, then, well, I'm going to choose not to worry or choose to be afraid. Here's the third question. And then, um, you know, uh, as, as, uh, as Jesus rules out this conversation with you, he said, now let's take a look at what's going on in your life. And you might answer, well, I've got this going on and I've got that going on. And I'm pretty concerned about that. Doesn't that... You know, I just got cancer. I just had this bad news about my job. Doesn't that qualify? Shouldn't I worry about that? I mean, I'm concerned. Well, first of all, just because you worry doesn't mean you know something or, or even means that you care about something. It simply means you don't trust. That's really what worry is. And just because I worry doesn't mean, if I worry for you, doesn't mean I care more about you. Or if I know more about what's going on in your life, no, it just means I'm not trusting. So how do we turn this around? Well, you might say, I've got all of this going on. What should I do? And let's put it into a kind of a math equation. Hey, Jesus, I've got X and Y going on. And Jesus says, yeah, I know about X and I know about Y. But I have in mind Z. Well, what's Z? I'm going to get you to the other side today. We're going to go through this. We're going to win. 
Jesus is going to be glorified. And you're going to be one step closer to letting your light shine in the darkness. Yeah, but we would retort. I, I really, I need to know about X and Y. He says, yeah, yeah, I, I know, but I know there's a, a Z. I know what's coming. I know what's next. Again, he's asking us, will you trust me? And again, we would say, yeah, but what about Y and Z? And, and then in the background, the TV might be uh, blaring. And all you hear on the TV or all you hear on the internet is, yeah, X and Y and X and Y and Y and X and Y and X and this is happening and this is happening and all of a sudden the darkness of the day clouds you over and what do you do? And Jesus reminds you, I've got a Z in mind. Let's go to the other side. Turn your question into a statement. Lord, don't you know? Don't you care? How about, Lord, you do know and you do care Therefore, I can trust you. Not too long ago, I had some pretty uh, unexpected bills after I gave a pretty big offering for a Pakistan project. And it was almost like the, the, the devil taunting me. See, you tried to trust Jesus and look what happens. And at, at first I was bothered by it. Like, maybe I shouldn't have done that. But then, Here's what I concluded. I made those statements. Jesus, you do know about this. You do care about me and my finances. If you wanted me to make an offering, you're also going to take care of the debt. And you know what he did? He always does. I turn the question, don't you care and don't you know, into the statement, you do know, you do care, and I'm going to trust you. I got one final takeaway for you today, and that is this. On a regular basis, on a daily basis, play Simon Says with Jesus. Play Simon Says with Jesus. What is that? Well, in the U.S., from childhood, I remember playing a game called Simon Says. I, I did a little research, and... Simon Says was first described in the early 1800s as a game, and uh, it hasn't really changed much. In fact, uh, this, this game that we play is actually represented all over the world in different cultures, and there's a lot of people who've heard some variation of that. And I'd like you to play Simon Says with me for just a moment, okay? Uh, so uh, why don't you um, sit up straight? Now, if you sit up straight, You've already failed, Simon Says, because here's how it goes. Every time I say Simon Says, then you do exactly what Simon Says. If I don't say Simon Says, well, don't do it. Simon Says, put your left hand up. Simon Says, put your right hand up. Simon Says, touch your nose. Simon Says, touch your chin. Simon Says, put your hands up. Simon Says, Put your hands down. Simon says, boy, what is Simon going to say next? And you know, in the story, maybe there was a, a little trickery. And, uh, you know, Simon says, put your hand down, up. And then put your hand down. And you, and you put your hand down. You go, oh, no, I messed up. Well, Jesus isn't here to trick you. But he's here to lead you. Simon says, and Jesus says what's next in life. And, um, you know, you might view that relationship with Christ as Jesus wants me to do that. I remember hearing people uh, when they discover a prayer, Jesus wants me to pray like to somebody I can't see. And, and uh, how do I do that? But as you learn to just converse, you learn to pray. You learn to communicate and connect. People have said, you want me to tithe? Well, just like Simon says, if Jesus says, do it, then we do it. If, we, if he says, give, then give generously. How, how can I do that? You don't know my bills. Well, again, do you know more than Jesus? And does he care about you? And can you trust him? Well, you can, even with your finances. And so 
every day, at the beginning of your day and throughout every challenge, play Simon Says with Jesus. What are you saying, Jesus, in the morning? He reminds you how good he is, how present he is, how he's with you, how your life affects others. So uh, let your light shine and, and think about him and do what he says. Uh, in, the, in the book of John chapter two, uh, uh, the, the, the wine ran out and Jesus is uh, posed with this problem. His mother simply points to everybody else says do what he says again there's you and there's Jesus and the effect of others do what he says and it's like having a cushion on a boat in the middle of the storm and your life is all about Jesus and it's really all about others and he loves you and he is for you and he is with you and the storms in life, the pain, the suffering, the grief, the loss, the trauma, uh, the crisis, they're all real. The storm is real. But so is the cushion. And so is Jesus. Life is hard, bring a cushion. Remember that every day. This is a new day. Pastor Mark, God bless you. Thanks for joining us.